hope you're having a great day today. Happy Saturday for you. It is actually really Sunday for me. I know it seems weird. Probably people just think that I filmed that day. There's an ant on me. I thought I killed those. <laughs> And then I upload that same cut within a day or so. I don't. I have. I live up on this mountain. See this mountain back here? I live up on it. You know what that means? That means that even though you're closer to the cell phone towers, you can actually see the cell phone towers from your house, yet you're going to get zero signal. Zero signal. <laughs> so if you think that because you live closer, it makes a difference, it does not. It just means that there's no signal. So we have horrendously awful internet, even my good Verizon regular phone that works like you know, a mile away awesomely does not do very well up here in the mountain, but that's okay. So to say all that, I film my videos usually a week ahead. Abundantly Blast is usually about a week and a half ahead because I film it in the way I upload it all at once. It just works that way. So a lot of you have said, a lot of my fellow sisters in the Lord of different skin color, different pigment color, I should say, have wanted me to speak on the topic that's going around right now. And I thought, okay, Lord, how do, what do I, I mean, I know what I want to say. This, Ridiculous, ridiculous, saddened, saddened world that we live in. That's what I want to say. Sin, sin is awful, awful and rampant, and people have free will to do what they want. And I just see that stuff, and I know when it all came out, everybody was doing the whole Black Tuesday thing and didn't post. I didn't even know. I literally, the next day, started flipping through because <laughs> I was like, why are people posting black things? And I was like, Oh, and then it was like I didn't even watch the news really. I just kind of scanned a little bit and then over the last few days I've really been able to see a lot more, see a lot more protests, things like that. Went to church today and got to hear a couple different stories and then um, got to see a pastor um, kneel down and wash the feet of another a fellow brother what happens to be darker pigmented skin color by a lighter skin color pastor <laughs> washing his feet to say, I serve you. I'm here to serve you humble myself and to say it doesn't matter but I'm with you I'm weeping with you and I'm sad with you and so I'm not here to say that I, I think it's awful that's what I'm here to say I, I, it's awful I stand against human life like awfulness what's going on I think it's terrible how they're treating people of a different color skin it happens a lot it's happened in the Bible it's happened in the Old Testament which we're reading about all of these terrible things that are happening in the world happens with kids each day, every single day. There's so much on the news that we don't, don't so much we don't even hear in the news that's happening to little kids right now, that's happening to babies right now, that's happened to especially girls, young girls, young women. The human trafficking is awful and the 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 taking advantage of our young girls is horrendous. The big news is based on this whole that people matter. People do matter. People as human beings matter. We matter because we are all came from God. God has placed us all here to take a part in this world and to do something good with it. Do people do something good with it? No, they don't. Not all. Some. Some take advantage of it. Some have their own agenda. Some have their greediness. Some have their own self-centeredness. Some people have their, you know what, I'm going to get my way no matter what. And there's no way anybody's going to tell me what I'm going to do. Way wrong it's so so wrong what do we do one we listen to ruby because you know she's here to bark I just, gotta, just gotta make sure she's out just protecting me here just chasing a kitty for one we need to do as the bible says and pray pray for our leaders pray for our world pray for our country our whole world not country i'm going to say world because i know it's all over the world for that and we need to get that love inside of us that the Lord has given us when we've been um, grafted into the body of Christ we get the Holy Spirit inside of us and guess what that Holy Spirit is it's it's God part of God right we don't get God here on earth we don't get Jesus here on earth but since the Holy Spirit lives inside of us we can connect with other believers and let that light shine of Jesus so that we can love everyone of all kinds of all everything's of different cultures of different um, we're, everything. I can, I'm going to name them all, but that will be like, you left that out? No. As one. We, we can respect. I can respect that people think a certain way. People watch me and think that I don't believe a certain way as they do. That I'm not here to tell them what they need to do. <laughs> That's, people have a mind. God has given this thing called a brain to everybody. And the greatest thing he's ever done is given us a choice of free will. A choice of free will to make our own choices. We become informed book falling from the tree we become informed we become knowledgeable and then we see God what do we do with this Lord what is it we do with what you're having us do if you're 
intentions are out there to slice somebody, your intentions out there just to be mean to somebody, your intentions out there to have people look at you and they're all these things, the prideness, all that stuff, no. You want that love of Jesus inside of you to penetrate so deep to everybody around you so that you can make a difference in your world. Patience, love, what is the, the fruits of the Spirit? Fruits of the Spirit, right? Gentleness, self-control, all of those things. There's so many more. I need to look that up. The fruit of the Spirit is love. I'm just remembering this song. Love, we should love one another, right? We should love one another. Love, joy, we should have joy. We should have happy and we should rejoice with people, right? Peace, right? Gentleness. We need gentleness. Self-control. We need self-control because what this body wants to do, what this mind and this mouth wants to do is say whatever it wants to say. You better have that self-control to control your words and control your actions so it doesn't spew out what you want and you're speaking out what God wants, right? This happened in the Bible, right? God didn't put us all to be the same, did he? If he did, go back to the Old Testament, the Tower of Babel. We didn't get the, no, we didn't get to that part yet, did we? I was like, did we get to that part yet? No, we didn't. We get to that part. What happened? They were all of one language and one kind. And what did God do? He separated them and had them be their own separate communities, I'm going to say, separate groups, right? Because we aren't all the same, but we are to come together and worship one. We are to come together and love our brothers as ourselves. God respects different groups, right? Otherwise, he'd make us the same way. We would all have the same color pigment, pigment, pigment in our body, and we don't. There is a whole different kinds of us, right? So we are to love one another as Christ has loved you. And the biggest thing is, we have no right to be angry. We have a right to be angry, but we've got to forgive because we have feelings, right? We're, we're, we're humans, that's part of us. We, we be angry. Jesus was angry, right? He came up and he flipped that tail. He was angry at what they were doing in his home. We have a right to do that, but we gotta bring in that forgiveness because when Jesus died on the cross for me, for you, he went and did that for me and for all my sins and all my yuckiness so that I can be forgiven. And if I can't forgive others, Jesus is not going to forgive me, right? It says that in the Bible. And then he gives me grace because I may mess up. I'm, you know, I'm watching these people on, U on YouTube. I was watching different news things because I've been informing myself because I was uninformed. And I'm watching and things that people have said, people have just been twisted and they are just slamming and going and going. And I'm like, oh my goodness, and you, you, you have to monitor what your words are. You have to be careful with what you say. Don't mind my dogs. You gotta be careful with what you say, right? Because you don't want to offend people. I don't want to offend people, but I know that something I say at one time may get taken the wrong way because we all have our own mind and we are all at different places in life, right? I might say something to somebody that's at a completely different place in my life and just because it doesn't bother me it might completely crush them because of where they're at in their life, right? And that doesn't mean that anybody's better than anybody. No, it's just that they were taking it completely out of context. And for those words we say, I'm sorry, forgive me for what I've said. That was not the way it was taken. Same thing with people in the world. People are going to say things and you're going to catch that. And you're going to be like, wait a minute. Maxine, stop. Max. Talk's going to ruin our talk here about loving our neighbors, <laughs> our brothers, and our sisters in the Lord. <sighs> so we don't need to be walking in eggshells, but we do need to be seeking the Lord with what he wants us to do and what he wants us to speak about and this week I I changed my letter board each week and I was like we need to do something it was love your neighbor who is your neighbor and I, last week our pastor my pastor talked about that about your neighbor and who's your neighbor it's not just my neighbor next door he's a really nice neighbor we got some really great older neighbors next door <laughs> but it's not just him it's it's the guy down the street it's the guy I came in contact with you know at, at the grocery store it's the the woman I came in contact with at the library it's the person I came in contact with when I went to the park those are my neighbors those are my sisters in the Lord right my brothers in the Lord we are all a community of people here on earth to do one thing and that's to make a difference in the world does everybody do that no 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 they don't and it's very evident in God's Word and we're gonna read about it because people have free will to do whatever they want and people will do if they have the choice I, mean, I don't know what a statistic would be but I would think that maybe seven times out of ten they, they do what they want to do I mean I don't know maybe that's stretching it to say 
right? We, we, we do against even Paul writes that I, I, I do not what my, what, what I ought to do <laughs> because my flesh wants to do it. And it's in God's words. We know it's human nature. We know it's that way. It takes a lot to stand up and say, no, I'm not going to do that. It takes a lot to say, no, I'm not going to say that or no, I'm not going to do those things. That's what we need to do. We need to stand up and say, hey, we're with you. We're with our sisters in the Lord. If you've got a little more red in your skin than I do, I got, some, I got a little bit red. I, guess I got a little bit more yellowish brown in there. <laughs> My husband, he's more of a white boy, I say. <laughs> if your pigment's darker than mine, maybe it's a little more redder than mine. Just know that we are together. We are together and loving. And if your situation on earth is, is not the ideal situation, I'm sorry, I get it. My situation may never become close to what yours ever has been, but I know there's people that I can look at that my situations in life will never be what theirs is because I just didn't have that opportunity in life. It's just because we're all different. Do I hold that person accountable for what I don't have? No, because this is my life and this is where I'm at. So one thing I know is that I am gonna be held accountable for my actions and what I say and what I don't say and what I do in my life. And I want that to be of the Lord. That's what we are held accountable for that. Am I held accountable for something but he, that did something in my family? No. Am I accountable for something that happened in my um, friend group of people that I hang out with, that they did? No. Even though we're part of the same thing, I am held responsible for what I choose to do in my life and what my actions are. I never want it to be something that oppresses somebody. I never want it to be something that pushes people down. I want to be able to lift people up and say, you know what, you matter. You matter. You matter because you are a child of the Most High King. You're a child of God. Isn't that awesome? You're chosen, you're not forsaken. God did not forget you. And God says a whole lot in his words about you and who you are. If you just took some time, looked that up in God's word and find out what he says about you, you would go, okay, I am. I am chosen, I'm not forsaken. I am who you say I am. Great little song there, right? Know that God has not put a spirit of fear inside of us, but a power, a sound mind, some self-control. He's given us that. He's given us power. He's given us a sound mind so we can think and an ability to control ourselves if we so choose that. I'm praying. I'm praying because this world is definitely a dark, dark place. It's been a dark. It's, it's just, you're seeing all this now. Read God's word. What happened back in what we're getting through the Israelites here. There's a whole lot of sin rampant in the world. That a lot of terribleness that you're reading. You're like, oh my goodness, it's awful. I can't believe that happened to the woman or that happened to kids. That's going on all day long right now in our world all the time. Just not a lot of it's been brought to light. So our nation is just at a part of just, it seems like that breaking and we're just pitting against each other and just looking and looking to nitpick. And I think of it like in a marriage and your fight. I think of it like in your marriage, okay, my husband. He'll, 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 he'll be able to attend to us, test to this. We are, we are not perfect. No, we are human beings. But guess what we do? We work together to make our relationship work. But guess what? If we start throwing daggers at each other, oh, this one might kind of push some off once in a while. But you know what? After a while, throwing those daggers, you might get a little bit tired and you just might start throwing some daggers back. And then you're gonna throw a little bit more. And you're gonna throw a little bit more. Throw a little bit more and it keeps going and going and going. And it never ends. And then it just explodes into this big giant explosion of a fight. Never a good thing. But when we lay aside our own differences and we say, hey, I forgive you. Yeah, but what? No, yeah, but no, no, no. I'm not going to go, yeah, but we're going to, I forgive you. I forgive you. Let's forgive what we've done. Let's move forward. That's what we're going to do. Because by the grace of God, we can get through this. By the grace of God, you can get through this. By the grace of God, we can get through anything in life once we set our minds to doing that. And that's what my hope is. And I hope my hope is that the Holy Spirit, which is inside of you, just fills you so much with peace, joy, and love. So that it overflows, and it's so overflowing that it just gushes out of you. Can I say gushes? Does that sound good? Pours out, pours probably a better word. <laughs> pours out of you into the people around you, to the people in your home to the people in your community, to the people in our city, to the people in our state, to the people in our country, to the people in our world that we can make a difference by showing the love, the forgiveness, the grace, because we receive it. Oh, we so receive that. And the Bible talks a lot about judge not because you don't want to be judged. Whatever we're judging other people as, 
that same kind of judgment is going to come back on us. I'm not going to be guilty of that. You don't want to be guilty of that. It's bad. It's horrible. There is sin, sin, sin. What you've got to do is look at your actions and what you're choosing to do. What are you going to do with this? You're faced here with that moment. You're faced with that moment of David with his slingshot and he's ready to hit Goliath. He's standing there before him, scared to death what he's going to do. And what is he going to do? This big giant thing is going to come at him. Is he going to falter and just scream and yell at him and lose it and just go crazy? Or is he going to take that precision? And okay, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? to do to make a difference and let that slingshot be flinging and then he's going to release it and that power and all those things those words those actions that you do is just going to hit the enemy and his plan and just annihilate him the enemy not people the enemy and his plan because what he's trying to do is divide he is trying to come in and destroy he's trying to come in and steal he's trying to come in and take our livelihood that's what he's doing that's what he's been doing since the beginning of time and we don't need to do that we don't need to allow that but it takes us stepping up and saying okay we're gonna be brave enough to stand against we're gonna stand and we're gonna show love joy peace patience kindness goodness self-control right because we have been forgiven we have received grace every single day for everything that we do we got to extend that to people too right and love our brothers as ourself love your neighbor as yourself right that's what it says in God's Word that's in the New Testament there's a lot in the Old Testament as well so with all that said let's go on to reading where we are at in the Old Testament maybe we'll be reading some things that can apply to our days today so we are reading in Exodus we're in the um, Exodus the Old Testament we're on chapters 31 through 40 I think that we're gonna read nine today which is a lot so you can be here for a little bit if you're still here um, you're gonna be reading here a little bit more and we're gonna get through Exodus I think that was the goal to get through it so that we can start a whole new chapter next week so we are on chapter 31 okay here's some words that I don't know how to pronounce Oliab and Bezal Bezalel so chapter 31 all right the Lord said to Moses see I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I filled him with the Spirit of God, with ability and intelligence, with knowledge and all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze, in cutting stones for setting, and in carving work, wood to work in every craft. So that's pretty cool. God has filled him with those gifts. And behold, I have appointed with him Oliab, Oliab, the son of Akasmak, of the tribe of Dan. That one's easy. I have given to all able men ability that they may make all that I have commanded you. So here he is. He's like, all the stuff I told you to do, and he's just like, what do I even do with all that? And he's like, here, here's the people that are going to make it. And I'll tell you because they got the gifts of that. Um, verse 7, the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the mercy seat that is on it and all the furnishings of the tent, the table and its utensils and the pure lampstand with all its utensils and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offerings with all its utensils and the basin and its stand and the finely worked garments, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons for their service as priests and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense for the holy place according to all that I have commanded you they shall do the Sabbath verse 12 and the Lord said to Moses you are to speak to the people of Israel and say above all you shall keep my Sabbaths for this is a sign between me and your and you throughout your generations that you may know that I the Lord sanctify you you shall keep the Sabbath because it is holy for you everyone who profanes it shall be put to death whoever does any work on it that soul shall be cut off from among his people can you imagine if God cut our soul off because we did something on Sunday <laughs> six days shall work be done but the seventh day is a Sabbath of solemn rest holy to the Lord whoever does any work on the Sabbath day shall be put to death therefore the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant forever it is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel that in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the seventh day he rested and was refreshed and he gave to Moses when he had finished speaking with him on Mount Sinai the two tablets of the testimony tablets of stone written with the finger of God that'd be pretty cool chapter 32 the golden calf 
when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered themselves together to Aaron and said to him, Up, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So here they are. Moses says, hey, wait here. I'm going to go up and speak to God. So while Moses is up there, I think, it, is it 40 days? I'm pretty sure it's 40 days. The people down there are starting to do what? We're going to wait? We're going to wait? What? So they're like, Aaron, you're next in line. Let's come and attack you. So what does Aaron do? Aaron is supposed to be right there with Moses, right? Being his buddy, right? His armor bearer, trying to help them, encourage him. And what does he do? So Aaron says to them, take off the rings of gold that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. He's like, oh, okay, here. So right away, he just falters and doesn't even stay encouraged. How so important it is to be encouraged by your brothers and sisters in the Lord, attending church, being around godly believers, being together so that you are not so easily swayed when people are coming like, hey, where's this Moses guy? He's supposed to be back here. Already, he's like, hey, take off that gold. Let's go do something with it. So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And real fast, they came out of Egypt, right? They were slaves, and yet they've got all this gold. God definitely didn't leave them desolate, did he? So all the people took off the rings of gold that were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool and made a golden calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out, out of the land of Egypt. So he's like, here, here's the calf going to bring you out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought burnt peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said to Moses, Go down, for your people whom you have brought out the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way that I have commanded them. They have made for themselves a golden calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed it to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore leave me alone, that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, in order that I may make a great nation of you. All right, so God's sitting here telling Moses, these are your people that you brought. <laughs> and he's mad. He's like, I've seen these people, and behold, they're stiff-necked people. Do you know any stiff-necked people that don't listen to God? Any stiff-necked groups that don't want to listen to God and obey his things? And so he's like, just leave me alone. God gets mad, right? Leave me alone. Otherwise, I'm going to come down and burn you all. <laughs> but he's like, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to make a great nation of them. So Moses implored the Lord his God and said, Oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? He's like, what, what is this? He's like, I don't even know. I haven't been down there yet. Why should the Egyptians say with evil intent, did he bring them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your burning anger and relent from this disaster against your people. Remember Isaac, Abraham, and Israel, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said to them, I will multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I promise I will give to your offspring, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord relented from the disaster that he had spoken of bringing on his people. So Moses here, he's helping the Lord to cool down. By saying, and he doesn't even know what's going on. I mean, Moses hasn't been down there to see them, to be in a fiery rage along with God, to be like, oh my goodness, he's not even in that. He's away from that. He's able to say, okay, let's be encouraged. It's much easier to be strengthened and encouraged when you have your body of believers there to build you up and to lift you up because you're not as easily to snap at a bad decision or seeing something react just because you're angry, right? Verse 15, then Moses turned and went down from the mountain with the two tablets of the testimony in his hands. Tablets were written on both sides, on the front and on the back, they were written. The tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved in the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp, what's going on? But he said, it is not the sound of shouting for victory or the sound of the cry of defeat, but the sound of singing that I hear. And as soon as he came near the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, Moses' anger burned hot. 
just like God's did, right? And he threw those tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He took the calf that they had made and burned it with fire and ground it into powder and scattered it on the water and made the people of Israel drink it. So he got just as mad because he could see what was going on and why now he knows, oh, this is why that Lord was getting angry. And Moses said to Aaron, what did this people do to you that you have brought such a great sin upon them? What are you thinking? And Aaron said, let not the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know the people that they are set on evil. For they said to me, make us gods who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, let anyone who has gold take it off. And so they gave it to me and I threw it in the fire and out came this calf. So here he is, Aaron's like, don't let the anger of my Lord burn hot. You know these people, you know these people are sinful people. You know these people are not consistently staying focused on the Lord, right? And they're set on doing evil. So they come to me and I'm like, what are we gonna do? So I'm like, here, just give me your gold, I'll just give you whatever, and out pops this, this calf. He's just casting that blame because I didn't do anything, I just gave them what they wanted. Here they are. We don't wanna do what people want us to do, right? You want to stand firm because people are evil. You know the people, they are set on evil, not the people are evil. People's sins, cause them to do evil things. That's a better word, Amy. See, we're printing for my words here. And when Moses saw the people had broken loose, for Aaron had let them break loose to the derision of their enemies, then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, who is on the Lord's side? He's like, who is with me? Come to me. How great that would be. Could you imagine right now, with the corruption and stuff in our world going on, if people would say, who is on the Lord's side? Come to me. Come to me on this side and stand with me to show that you are for the fruits of the Spirit that come from the Lord. So when he did that, all the sons of Levi gathered around him. And he said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Put your swords on your side, each of you, and go to and fro from gate to gate throughout this camp, and each of you kill his brother and his companion and his neighbor. Whew. <laughs> Thank goodness the Lord is not telling us to do that because that's not cool. And the sons of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and that day about 3,000 men of the people fell. And Moses said, Today you have been ordained for the service of the Lord, each one at the cost of his son and of his brothers, so that he might bestow a blessing upon you this day. So, a lot of this in the Old Testament, right? But God deals with our hearts nowadays, right? God deals with our hearts, lets us come to him for repentance and forgiveness, right? That's what we can do. We don't have to go and slaughter our brothers and sisters and the Lord with the sword, even though we do with our words and everything else. Verse 30, the next day Moses said to the people, you have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sins. So Moses returned to the Lord and said, alas, this people has sinned a great sin. They have made for themselves gods of gold, but now if you will forgive their sin, but if not, please blot me out of your book that you have written. But the Lord said to Moses, whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. But now, go lead the people of the place about which I have spoken to you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Then the Lord sent a plague on the people because they made the calf the one that Aaron made. So they've got a plague upon them. But Moses has got an angel going before him, right? For his protection and his guidance. Just like we have the Holy Spirit inside of us for guidance and protection in our life. Chapter 33. The command to leave Sinai. The Lord said to Moses, depart, go up from here, you and the people whom you have brought up out of the land of Egypt, to the land of which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying to your offspring, I will give it to you. I will send an angel before you, and I will drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Go up to a land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go up among you, lest I consume you on the way, for you are stiff-necked people. He's like, I'm not going to go with you because these people complain, these people are new, and my wrath is just going to pour out and smote them all. We don't want to do that. So when the people heard this disastrous word, they mourned, and no one put on his ornaments. For the Lord said to Moses, Say to the people of Israel, You are stiff-necked people. If for a single moment I shall go up among you, I consume you. So now take off your ornaments that I may know what to do with you. Therefore the people of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments from Mount Horeb onward. 
the tent of meeting. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it up outside the camp, far from the camp. And he called it the tent of meeting. And everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up and each would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak to Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each at his tent door. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man would not depart from the tent. So the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Isn't that pretty cool that now, we can have the Holy Spirit inside of us and we can speak to, to it and get our words and get our reasoning and get our things that we have to do in our lives. Moses' intercession. Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up this people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and you have also found favor in my sight. Now therefore, if I have found favor in your sight, Please show me now your ways that I may know you in order to find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. And he said to him, If your presence will not go with me, do not bring us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight, I and your people, if it is it not in your going with us? So that we are distinct and your people from every other people on the face of the earth. We want to be different from them. And the Lord says to Moses, this very thing that you have spoken I will do for you have found favor in my sight and I know you by name. Moses said, please show me your glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy on whom I shall mercy. But he says, you cannot see my face for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will see you put, I will put you in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So when he spoke to him face to face, maybe he spoke to him in the cloud, it sounds like. So here he is, he's like, and the Lord's like, I will do this very thing that you've spoken to me. The very thing that you have asked me to do because I am because you have found favor in my sight. And Moses asked him and he received it, right? Moses makes new tablets. The Lord said to Moses, cut for yourself two tablets of stone like the first. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablet, which you broke. He's like, here, since you busted my tablets the first time, make another pair and then I will write on them because you broke the first one. He just reminded him. Be ready by the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, the present, and present yourself there to me on top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and not, no one be seen throughout all the mountain. Let no flocks or herds graze opposite that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the first, and he rose early in the morning and went up to Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquities of the father on the children and the children's children to the gener third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. And he said, if now I found favor in your sight, O Lord, please let the Lord go in the midst of us for it is a stiff necked people and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for your inheritance. The covenant renewed. And he said, behold, I'm making a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels such as have not been created in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you are, you shall see the work of the Lord. I'm sorry. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. We want God to do an awesome thing with our life, right? Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take care lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you go, lest it becomes a snare in your midst. You shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their ashram, for you shall worship no other gods. For the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. 
lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land and when they whore after their gods and sacrifice to their gods and you are invited you eat of a sacrifice and you take of their daughters for your sons and their daughters whore after their gods and make your sons whore after their gods you shall not make for yourself any gods of cast metal you shall keep the feast of unleavened bread seven days you shall eat unleavened bread as i commanded you at the time appointed in the month Abib, for in the month Abib you came out from Egypt, and all that open the womb are mine. All your male livestock, the firstborn of cow and sheep, the firstborn of a donkey, you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it with you, you shall break its neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest you shall rest. You shall observe the Feast of Weeks, the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the Feast of Inn Gathering at the year's end. Three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God and God of Israel, for I will cast out nations before you and enlarge your borders, so no one shall cover your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, or let the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover remain until the morning. The best of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. And he gave us some of these rules before. And the Lord said to Moses, write these words, for in accordance with these words I have made a covenant with you and with Israel. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. All right, now we got the shining face of Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of, his te of the testimony in his hand as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses talked with them. Afterward, all the people of Israel came near, and they commanded them all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. And when Moses had finished speaking with him, he put a veil over his face. Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would remove that veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the people of Israel what he, he was commanded, the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining. And Moses would put the veil over his face again until he went in to speak with him. The face would be so shining bright, he had to put a veil over top of it. Cool, huh? Sabbath regulation. Moses assembled all the congregation of the people of Israel and said to them, These are the things that the Lord has commanded you to do. Six days you shall be work shall be done, but on the seventh day you shall have Sabbath of solemn rest. Holy to the Lord. Whatever does any whoever does any work shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire in all your dwelling places on the Sabbath day. Contributions for the tabernacle. Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, This is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution, gold, silver, and bronze, blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and fine twined linen goat's hairs, tanned ram skins and goat skins, acacia wood, oil for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the fragrance incense, and onyx stones and stones for setting, and for the ephod and for the breastpiece. Let every skillful craftsman among you come and make all the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle, its tent, and its covering, its hooks, and its frames, its bars, its pillars, and its bases. The ark with its poles, the mercy seat, and the veil of the screen. The table with its poles and all its utensils, and the bread of the presence. The lampstand also for the lamp. The light with its utensils and its lamps, and for the oil of the light. And the altar of incense with its poles, and the anointing oil and fragrant incense. And the screen door for the door at the door of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offerings with its grating of bronze, its poles and its utensils of basin, basin and its stand, the hangings of the court, its pillars and its bases, and the screen for the gate of the court, the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the court and their cords, the finely worked garments for ministering in the holy place, the holy garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments of his sons for their service as priests. Then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came, everyone whose heart stirred him, and everyone whose spirit moved him and brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting for all its service and for the holy garments. So they came, both men and women, not just men, there were some women there too. All who were of willing heart brought brooches and earrings and signet rings and armlets, all sorts of gold objects. Every man dedicated an offering of gold to the Lord and every one who possessed blue or purple or scarlet yarns or fine linen or goat's hair or tanned ram skins or goat skins made them. Everyone who could make a contribution of silver bronze brought it 
as the Lord's contribution. Everyone who possessed acacia wood of any use in the work brought it, and every skillful woman spun with her hands. They've all brought what they had, spun in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twisted linen. All the women whose hearts stirred them to use their skill spun, spun the goat's hair. And the leader brought an onyx stone and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastpiece and spices and oils for the lights and for the anointing oil and the fragrant incense. All the men and women, the people of Israel, whose heart moved them to bring anything for the work that the Lord had commanded by Moses to be done, brought it as a free will offering to the Lord. Didn't bring it with strings attached, brought it and said, here, just take it, do whatever is with you please. Construction of the tabernacle. Then Moses said to the people of Israel, see the Lord has called by name Bezel, the son of Uri, son of Hur of the tribe of Judah, and he has filled him with the spirit of God with skill with intelligence, with knowledge, and with all craftsmanship, to devise artistic designs to work in gold and silver and bronze, and cutting stones for every setting and every carving work for every work and every skilled craft. And he was inspired him to teach both him and Oliab, the son of somebody of the tribe of Dan. He has filled them with skills to do every sort of work done by an engraver or by a designer or by an embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns, and any fine twine linen or by a weaver by any sort of workman or skilled designer. Chapter 36. So Bezalel and Oliab and every craftsman whom the Lord has put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work in accordance with all the Lord commanded. And Moses called them and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him up to do the work, and they received from Moses all the contributions the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. They still kept bringing him the free will offerings every morning, so that all the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task on the sanctuary came each from the task that he was doing and said to Moses, the people bring much more than enough for doing the work the Lord has commanded us. So Moses gave commands and the word was proclaimed, let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution for the sanctuary so the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient to do all the work. So they were restrained from their giving because they just kept giving and giving and giving. There was no lack, they just wanted to give. That's a good thing. And all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with its ten curtains. They were made of fine twine linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarns, with cherubim skillfully worked. All the curtains were the same size. Verse 10. He coupled five curtains to one another and other five to another. He made loops. He's got his 50 loops. The loops were opposite. And he made 50 clasps of gold. Verse 14. He also made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. Um, the 11 curtains were the same size. He made 50 loops on the edge, the outermost edge, and he made 50 class. Verse 20, then he made the upright frame for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Two cubits was the length of a frame and a cubit and a half the breadth for each frame. Each frame had two tenons for fitting together. He did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. He made 40 bases of silver um, for the second side of the tabernacle. On the north he made 20 frames and 40 bases of silver, two bases under one. There's a whole lot that he did. I'm probably losing you, so that's why I'm skipping a little bit over this. Um, he overlaid them with gold, made their rings of gold for holders for the bars, and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. And with cherubim scarefully worked into it, he made it. And for it, he made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold. Verse, or chapter 37, making the ark. So he made the ark. He told them how to do it. That's what it's going to be. Verse 9 says, The cherubim spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces one to another toward the mercy seats were the faces of the cherubim. Um, making the table, verse 10, He also made the table of acacia wood two cubits in length, a cubit its breadth, and a cubit and half its height. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a molding of gold around it. Making the lampstand, He also made the lampstand in pure gold. He hammered it. Tell us how he did it. He made it and all its utensils of talent of pure gold. I'm making the altar of incense. I'm making the altar of incense. There's two. He made it, um, making a bronze basin, making the court, and materials for the tabernacle. So he tells them exactly what they need. And making the priestly garments, he tells them how to make that. Lots to go on to be specific of all this, right? I'm just now reading all this because there's a lot to read and a lot of repetition and a lot of things, um, how they made these things. 
chapter 40, the tabernacle erected. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, on the first day of the first month, you shall erect the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put you in it the ark of the testimony and you shall screen the ark with the veil. And you shall bring in the table and arrange it and you shall bring in the lampstand and put up its lamps. And you shall put the golden altar for incense before the ark of the testimony and set up on the screen for the door of the tabernacle. And you shall set the altar burnt offering before the door and place the base between the tent, set up the court and the screen. Take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, so that it may become holy. Right? So we want to highlight that. You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it and consecrate it and it all its furniture so it becomes holy. You want to, lots of anointing what they're going to do. We want to anoint things in our lives, in our homes, in our marriages, doors, windows, beds, and all those things. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting, and you shall wash them with water, and put on the and put on Aaron the holy garments, and you shall anoint him and consecrate him, and he may serve me as a priest. You shall put his sons also and put coats on them, and anoint them as you anointed their father that they may serve me as priests, and their anointing shall admit them to a perpetual priesthood throughout their generations. This Moses did according to all the Lord had commanded him, so he did. In the first month and the second year, on the first day of the month, he erected his tabernacle, he laid its bases, set up its frames, put up its poles, spread the tent over it, um, as the Lord commanded. He took the testimony and put it in the ark, and put the poles on the ark. And he brought the ark into the ta um, tabernacle. He put everything up and arranged it. He put the lampstand, he put the golden altar, and he set the altar and burnt offerings there. Verse 30, set the basin. 32, when they went into the tent of meeting, when they approached the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded. So Moses finished the work, the glory of the Lord. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud settled on it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up when they did not set out until the next day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and fire was it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel, throughout all of their journeys. God's coming, and God is leading, and God is directing. Listen to me. Do this go here and do this it's our job to do it right all right that was a whole lot of reading there hopefully you kept with me we're done with <laughs> with exodus and now next week we're gonna move on to leviticus let's read five chapters in leviticus one two three four five you think you do six <laughs> is that too much let's do six i know let's throw one extra day we want to get through this right it's not about getting through but it's about uh Let's keep going through because you're gonna have the laws, all the different laws that they have. So, great little story, great little story. <laughs> our things we don't want our fire to kindle and to destroy and to, what did he say, what was the words he said? You're stiff necked people. We don't wanna be stiff necked nation. Do we wanna be forgiving nation? We wanna be a come alongside when he stood at the gate and said, who's coming with the Lord's side? Get on over him, be over here. That's what we wanna do in our own lives. We wanna be on the Lord's side not the side that's fighting against everything, right? We want to be in the favor and the grace of the Lord Jesus. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for this time to come together to read and to learn more about you, Lord Jesus. Right now, I'm just sending your peace, your joy, and your love, Lord Jesus, as we are going up against a huge tribulation, a big giant, giant in our world right now, Lord Jesus. And we're just praying that everybody acts Calm and cool like a David, right? Gets up there, might have been nervous on the inside, a little shaken, but he stood there and he says, I come in the name of the Lord. And that's what we want to do in our world. We want to come in the name of the Lord to bring peace, restore that hope, and spread that love that can only come from having that personal relationship with Jesus. Um, I'm praying for blessings. I'm praying for things to move, things to open finances to be taken care of, jobs to be had, um, for kids, the normalcy of life so they can go enjoy some time with their friends again, Lord Jesus. Um, we love you so, so much. It's in your precious name we pray.
if you met. Fantastic. All right, you have a wonderful, fantastic rest of your Saturday. I'm gonna go inside and go enjoy time with my family, and then I'm gonna see you again on Monday for another day in the life. Sound good? All right, remember, bring that fruits of the spirit, let it come evident in your life, and let's bring it out and shed it into this deep, dark world. All right, well, have a fantastic rest of your day. We'll see you on Monday. Bye.